I just wanted to do a fast follow-up video to the dialogue that Professor Anton and I had. Let me explain the background for, for that video. Um, we talked the day before briefly, and he called me that morning and asked me if I wanted to do the, the it was that morning here in the UK, if I wanted to do the dialogue. Uh, I said yes, I hadn't really prepared anything. When he asked me if I had read Sartre, basically my mind went to his philosophy, to Sartre's philosophy, and I think I've pretty much read most of his philosophy. I've read a couple of his plays, um, The Flies, No Exit, I've read um, Nausea, I've read some of his fiction, in other words. Um, I haven't read much of the other stuff. He's got a lot of philosophy of theater stuff. He's got a lot of late po uh, political philosophy. Hadn't read any of that. So, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said all, and I don't think that was right. It was just off the top of my head, and it was a mistake. Now, for the rest of it, I think I understand Professor Anton better after listening um, to him in a couple these couple of conversations. He is trying, I think, to force people to think um, by by presenting his metaphors, his linguistic metaphors. And that can be very intriguing, and it really can force us out of our comfort zones and force us to think in ways that we hadn't conceived of before. So I see no problem with that. What I like to do personally is not tell you what to think um, and not tell you even what you should be reading, although I do make suggestions, but to ask questions and I just find it interesting to see how people think once I've asked them questions that I find intriguing. And I guess the three questions that I would want to ask that are follow-ons from that video are, do you think there are any limits to scientific naturalism? Do you think there are any questions that we aren't going to, to be able to answer in science, using science, um, or not? If if not, why? If so, why? Um, do you also think that mathematics, um, because it's used in the sciences, obviously, do you? Th what do you think mathematics is by its very nature? And there is the old conundrum of is it discovered or is it invented? And I more and more, and I really probably, if you, if I want to leave the question open, I wouldn't be telling my bias here, but I, I, I'm more and more, I've vacillated between those two, but I more and more think it is probably discovered. Uh, but I'm interested in what you guys think. Is mathematics discovered or is it invented? And the answer to that can have a lot of implications for the natural sciences as well. And then finally, the senses. How valid and absolute are, uh, is the data that we get directly from sense input? In other words, um, considering that we see the world through our senses, and yet, and this is something I find intriguing, and it's not that I have the answer to this, because I don't. And we see the world, and we apprehend the world, we understand the world through our sense modalities, which of course are um, sight, smell, feeling, um, hearing. So we experience the world that way. However, um, we don't directly experience the whole of the electromagnetic spectrum. There's a lot of energy out there that we don't experience directly through our senses. Is there any implication of that for scientific naturalism at all? And as again, I'm not, it's not that I know the answers and I'm sitting here with all the answers and it's a test and you guys have to tell me the right answers and I'll give you a full marks and you know you'll go on to the next 
grade or whatever, or the, you know, the next um, postgraduate course, because I don't know. I'm asking because I'm curious uh, to see how you guys think about it. So those are the questions, and they'll be in the low bar. Um, what do you, you guys think about those three questions? I'd be interested in knowing what you think. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.